Hi, this is Andrea Kane, and I'm here again with you for HIT 292 Reimbursement Systems. And this is still week 12, but we are finally on our last lecture video for week 12, which is part seven. And we are going to focus on hospice services and how they are paid. Some key terms you'll need to know are hospice, palliative care, and respite care. If you're following along in your book, we are on page 186. Hospice is a comprehensive, holistic approach to healthcare that recognizes patients' impending deaths. Hospice uses an interdisciplinary approach to deliver medical, nursing, social, psychological, emotional, and spiritual services through the use of a broad spectrum of professional and other caregivers. Hospice provides palliative care, meaning the services are designed to relieve patients' pain and suffering. They are not designed to cure patients' underlying conditions. Hospice patients have decided to forego curative treatments for their diseases when they sign up to hospice. So when patients say, okay, I'm not pursuing a cure anymore, they can sign up for hospice. But as long as they're pursuing, pursuing curative treatments, they cannot be a part of hospice, but they can still receive palliative care, just not through hospice. And notice too that the services for hospice are provided to the patients and their families. This is not just a patient specific um, type of service as we've been going through before. This also addresses the family. So what are some Medicare covered services when it comes to hospice? Well, obviously, physician services, skilled nursing care, medical equipment, medical supplies, drugs and biologicals for pain control and symptom management, counseling, dietary, spiritual, bereavement, other services, inpatient respite care when the caregiver is just wiped out from caring for their person, their loved one. There is respite care where hospice can step in and take over and provide care for up to five days to give that caregiver a break. Short-term inpatient acute care, um, physical, occupational, and speech therapy, home health aids, and homemaker services, other services necessary for palliative and care and management of the terminal illness. Hospice services can be provided in the patient's home or whatever setting is considered their home, if they're in a skilled nursing facility um, or that type of setting. It can also be done in a hospital-based setting, and it also can be done in an independent hospice facility. The hospice care team is made up of physicians, nurses, counselors, social workers, therapists, aides, volunteers, and again, they care for not only the patient, but also their family or whatever their, their um, family unit is. And again, I talked about how hospice is provided in patient homes, in freestanding hospice facilities, in um, units of acute care, inpatient hospitals, at sk in skilled nursing facilities. And then also there are some home health agencies that are able to provide hospice services. The hospice benefit requires two physicians to certify that the patient is terminally ill and has six months or less to live. And the physicians are typically the attending physician and um, a hospice physician. The beneficiary has to elect hospice benefit in writing. There has to be a written plan of care. The first benefit period lasts 90 days. And then the second benefit period is after a recertification for a second 90-day benefit. Prior to that 180th day, the hospice provider has to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the patient. They may be recertified for an unlimited number of 60-day periods, each preceding a face-to-face -face encounter. Hospice does not have a deductible. Prescriptions are 5% coinsurance, not to exceed $5 for each outpatient prescription. In terms of inpatient respite care, 5% of Medicare's respite care payment per day, not to exceed Part A inpatient deductible, which is $1,340 as of the fiscal year 2018. 
So how is it calculated? Well, you have a per diem reimbursement methodology. There are four levels of hospice care considered categories. You have um, routine home care, which is RHC. You have continuous home care, which is CHC. Inpatient respite care, which is IRC. And general inpatient care, which is GIC. And you can see the differences in the payments. The daily rate includes visit cost, on-call services, care planning, drugs and medical equipment, supplies related to the terminal illness, and transportation. The daily rate is not related to an amount of services. Notice that, that the amount of services provided does not determine the daily rate. Payment for a day with no services is equal to a day with many services. And a day, daily rate does not include the cost of services that are unrelated to terminal illness. That gets um, billed under Medicare Part A and Part B. There is a wage index adjustment. Of course, there is. Um, geographic location is considered in every prospective payment system there is. Um, and it looks at um, urban versus non-urban. There's a labor portion versus a non-labor portion, as always. And then there's an intensity of human resources that varies by, by category. And you can see here the different labor portions. If you look at page 189 in your book, it talks about the foundation of hospice PPS. That step one is to assign each day to a category standard daily payment rate. And that's your RHC versus your CHC versus your IRC versus your GIC. Step two is adjusting for that for geographic factors and intensity of service. Step three is multiplying the geographic adjusted category standard daily payment rate by the number of days in the category. And then step four is summit, summing that amount for all applicable categories. So for instance, a patient could theoretically in that in that 90 day period they could have rhc services chc services irc services and gic services and you add all those up um, through the the um, different layers to get to the payment rate extended care is provided during the beneficiary's last seven days of life it covers nursing and or social work care it's up to four hours of services per day and the reimbursement is by hour using the CHC hourly rate. And that's a service intensity add-on. And that's in that step two that I was talking about that's on page 189. So payment steps, you assign the category, you do the wage index category rate, you multiply by the number of days by adjusted category rate and sum it. There are hospice provider service limits. The number of days of inpatient care can't, as, cannot exceed 20% of the total patient care days. There is an aggregate cap amount. Total payments for the provider may not exceed the cap. In 2018, the cap was $28,689.04. And that is it. That takes us right to page 191, which is the end of this chapter. Um, there was a lot of material in here. What I would suggest that you focus on are the major items under each one. I will not be asking you at any time to calculate any of these rates out, but you do need to understand about, about the wage index and the labor versus non-labor and um, the add-ons and some of the things that are specific to each one. So just make sure that you're familiar with the major categories and topics under each of these. And remember, there's only, um, the, the whole quiz is 50 points. So I really had to hit high points um, in the quiz and not get too close down into the weeds. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And next week, we will be moving on to chapter 9 because we've already covered chapter 8 in week 11. So in week 13, we move on to revenue cycle management, and that'll be chapter 9. We'll spend two weeks there. So you um, won't have a quiz in week 13. All right, take care. Talk to you again soon. Bye.